man. Welcome to Profile Pod TV. I'm your host, Double A, back for another spectacular episode of the pod. So glad to be here as always, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I got my brand new Profile Pod TV nifty hat. And I want to thank everybody real quick on Instagram for showing love, for supporting, for uh, reposting the uh, post that I uh, shared today on, on, on my page. And uh, thank you everybody for being so supportive. We have some, we've already had um, a lot of uh, people order. So if you're interested, while supplies last, the hats are available, ladies and gentlemen. We got purple, we got blue, and we got black. So get your hat before they uh, sell out. So thanks again, everybody. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from here on YouTube. If you're uh, tuning in on the audio platforms, Thank you a million. Don't forget to subscribe to Profile Pod TV. Hit that subscribe button there at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen on the purple logo, and you'd be all good. I appreciate that. So don't forget to rate and review on, on Apple Podcasts, and follow me on Instagram, Clubhouse. It's all good, man. I, I love to interact with the, the audience, and I appreciate all of you. So once again, thank you so much. We have another uh, spectacular guest here in store waiting, standing by, as you can see. Um, but uh, before I introduce our guest, if you would like to be a guest on this podcast, and if you're doing something inspirational to inspire the human spirit, it's got to be something extraordinary. Um, hit me up on the DM and uh, send me a DM on Profile Pod TV. We'll schedule something and we'll get you on the podcast because my aim, my goal for this podcast is to uh, highlight others, showcase them, put the spotlight on them and uh, really put them on a pedestal so that uh, they're getting uh, more exposure, more promotion. And at the same time, uh, I'm promoting, uh, I'm growing my podcast and we're entertaining the audience. It's a win, win, win for everybody. We're building community. We're building unity. And uh, like I said, I always say it every week, man, once you're a guest on this podcast, uh, it doesn't stop there for me. I will continue to promote you. I'll continue to repost and share your content and do, you know, show support any way that I can. So uh, I'm just trying to, again, create that community within uh, my from within my guests and my, uh, and my podcast here. So uh, that's one thing I really want to emphasize. So um, hey. just wanted to mention those things. And yeah. Dude, you're so, the reason why, man. That's, dude. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, as, as, let's, let's get to our guest. As you can see, we have... The gentleman here, he hails out of Seattle, Washington originally. He's now in Los Angeles doing his thing. He's a producer. He's an engineer. He's a, a singer. He's acts. Uh, he's a CEO, entrepreneur. He does a, a lot of, of, of everything. He's a master of many trades, and he's here to talk about his story. Uh, I'm really excited to, to, to talk to him because, I, I you know, as always, uh, every one of my guests, I, I, I circle that uh, calendar and I can't wait to talk to, to him. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome my man, Marcus Blake, a.k.a. Surf Man. How are you, brother? Thank you for being here. Dude, thank you so much for having me, man. That, bro, killer introductions, my man. Appreciate you, bro. I like, dude, I'm so happy to be here, bro. And uh, I got mad love for the stuff that you're doing, man. It, it really goes like... I, Kind of what you're saying about circling the calendar date, man. Stuff like this is by far one of the biggest things I look forward to is is being able to just kind of just collaborate in our in our crafts and our creative spaces and the things that we love doing and just helping each other out, man, and having amazing conversations, man. Talk about podcasts, bro. What a great year for that, you know? Like absolutely podcasts have just been I've watched so many over this last year, you know what I mean? Just, just taking in so much, there's so much knowledge on them, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt, Marcus. No, and first of all, thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the compliment and it's, it's very humbling and it's, it's an honor to have you here because you're, you're a, an extremely talented man uh, and, and as well. And thank um, you, man. Thank you. absolutely, absolutely. And, but yeah, you know, you podcasting definitely took off in 2020 is, as did uh, many other uh, ventures, you know, people started businesses, people started side hustles, and um, and, that, it's, and that's great to see that, man. It's great to see people becoming entrepreneurial, and myself included, man. I, I have, uh, I've always wanted, I've always been entrepreneurial, 
and I've had my um, my struggles with it and my ups and downs. But uh, oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm committed. To, this time I'm in it for the long haul, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm ready to go, man. What, what how was uh how was your day today in Los Angeles, man? In North Hollywood, I know you're over there, and um, what's 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 been going on with you guys? Oh, uh, dude, today was it was great today, man. Uh, I actually, you know, I had a, a late session last night, so uh, started at like midnight. Uh, my boy came through, and then. Uh, we, we had a session until I think it was about six or seven there. And then I, I, I usually will have these sessions late night and I'll stay a couple hours after and start like working on my own stuff. And that's in a sense. So it was there from like probably 12 to 12. And then it came home and just kind of relaxed for a little bit, bro. Went and got some plants with Flip. It was really nice. Had to, had to bring the house to life a little bit, you know, get, get some nature in here. Uh, and then I had another session uh, at four, went, but uh i had that from like four to eight ran home you know it ran it ran a little over even we ended at like 8 30 and uh you know skirted home and got it i got here man and i it was one of those things where like i was you know it's like i feel like sometimes everything just stacks 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 and then you have a couple days where it's like nothing you know what i mean the entrepreneur side of things so you have to kind of like create that side of it you know what i'm uh in that regard so yeah yeah no. yeah man it's been it's been a long day but it's been a great day can't complain bro i'm super happy to be able to do this you know doing what you love it's kind of easy to just dedicate time, like your your energy and and uh yeah you're all you know yeah. I feel like it's not like i'm going to work going to do that stuff i'm just really putting myself in uh my happy place yeah <laughs> that's kind no of the 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 way to do it, you know, I feel like LA is that that's the dream of coming out here, doing the things that you want to do. And then along the way, figuring out how to make it, make it happen, you know? Absolutely. No, no doubt. No doubt. Marcus, I think, um, yeah, like you said, when you're doing what you love, it's definitely, it doesn't feel like work, man. It's, it's, it's definitely something that it just comes, it's, it's almost easy, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's easy to get to, I mean, not easy. I shouldn't say easy, but it's, um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you're, it doesn't, it doesn't take, you know, uh, that much energy to get going. It, it's just, yeah. natural. you're doing, you're in your natural. Oh yeah. And you're passionate and, and then it, things just go from there, you know? 100% man. I, I definitely would say like when, when I put that foot forward and I took like really bet on myself and like took myself serious, I feel like I noticed how just the energy in my whole life started to change everything around me. Like, really started to just focus on what's ahead, but being able to stay present and be able to create for the future, you know, but still living in the present. Like, I feel like sometimes doing music, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna drop this in eight months from now. So for the next eight months, you can just be like, oh, all right, it's dropping. And then you drop it and it's like, oh, okay, what's next? Yeah, on to the next. You know? It's just the, the step and step and step. Yeah, Marcus, I get it, man. I get it. Man, you do so much, Marcus. You, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, you produce music, you, you engineer music, you, uh, you're an actor, you're an entrepreneur, you have your own record company. Um, what, uh, you, you're dropping an album in the summer. Let, let's kind of start with, with, with the music thing, man. How did, uh, how did all this come about for, you, for yourself, man? How did you figure out that music was something that you wanted to be involved with? You wanted to produce music. How did that passion, how did you discover that passion? Oh man, well, you know, oddly enough, uh, I, I my, some of my earliest memories, like when I think about what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I was in my room, you know, I, I, I was one of those kids that, you know, I grew up in a sports family and, you know, I love sports I, and I, I played that my whole life but I was always kind of deep down wanting to do music. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to do entertainment. I wanted to act. Uh, you know, my mom used to tell, she would tell me actually, like when I was a kid, I would just, if I had the video camera, I would not like, I would not drop the video camera. Like she would leave it out and I would be going around filming my brother and sister, like trying to make it like a little TV show type stuff. And this is like with the VCR tapes, you know? And so when I think about those times. I also remember like, I had been maybe like seven or eight 
I remember uh, I loved American Idol. So I always wanted to put on like shows in, at my house, but like, you know, my, they, my family, we were there, my brother and sister were really busy with sports. So they weren't around as much. So it was trying, I was trying to, you know, have us all do this stuff. But I noticed that it was sports that really brought us together. So I started, I felt like I just kind of stuck with that, you know, and I wasn't very outspoken in the way where it's like, you know, I want to do music. I'm going to do that because I, I really, I love basketball, man. I still love basketball. And that's okay. what that was like my first thing I started getting into, but throughout, you know, my childhood and growing up, bro, I freestyled with my friends since I was in like fifth grade. Like it's one of those things where it was just like, I started writing. I would always write little stories, little poetry, like just little folder things, Th things I feel like you do when you're, you're just wanting to create some like a, just a, another land, you know, a different, a different place. And uh -huh. I was huge into Legos. So I was always into like creating and building and finding a way to improve, you know? And so through basketball, I feel like that kind of gave me a sense of work ethic. You know, my dad was very much like very, he instilled a very strong work ethic, I think in uh, myself personally, you know, and, and all, my brother and sister too, he, he always was very much like, yo, work hard, you'll get what you want. You know, you, you got, somebody has to tell you how to do this stuff and tell you how to do it. Well, you're going to be figuring out for a while, you know, and uh, I, I used to be the kid that, you know, I'd start something and then like cleaning and I kind of get sidetracked. I would want to go like listen to music or I want to go kind of just like create, I just be in that realm. And I'm very much like kind of all, all over the place in that way. So having my hands in different pots was always kind of something I feel like it was just who I was, you know, and. I love arts and I love movies. Movies was something that my, uh, like my best memories of childhood were probably like some of the movies I, I would watch and stuff. And just animation too, man. Like th that, like Tom and Jerry, one that inspires me in a way where I watched the new one that came out and I felt like I was like 10 years old again. And this like creative <laughs> art came out. Dude, I went to the studio and I crushed out like three songs in a way that it was just like fun and I felt like good. And I feel like it kind of stems, you know, from my childhood movies and just that side of like creativity. So yeah. when I moved to um, Los Angeles, I, you know, I moved out here to just kind of focus on acting originally. And um, the situation I in, you know, like long story short, I was supposed to stay with somebody, fell through. Uh, didn't hear back from the person for a while and I ended up sleeping in my car for a couple of weeks. So when I was like 18, you know, just out of high school, I didn't end up wanting to go to the college route. Uh, just didn't, I didn't feel like I fit in in a classroom setting versus more like self-taught kind of learn as I go through people. I, I really think like this is a better way of learning to me than the way that I was told I should do. Right. My, yeah. But the thing is, school is also an amazing thing for a lot of people, you know, what I for mean? sure, like just not for everybody. So I came out here and, uh, you know, I was uh, I ended up moving in with some family a couple of weeks later because my grandma and she has my grandma, man. She uh, put uh, I was just about to run out of money, man. I had a couple hundred bucks and I was about to go back home because I was like, dang, OK. You know, if I do sleep in my car for too long and I don't have any money, it's just not going to really, uh, like, I got to find a job at least. So I had to try to apply. I was applying to a couple of jobs and in that two weeks just didn't get any bites. And so the day before I'm leaving, I get a call from uh, my mom's cousin, Kimberly, and, and our, one of our family members saying, hey, like your grandma talked to me, this and that, like, uh, I heard you're out here and heard the situation you're kind of in. And I was like, how did my grandma even know? So I guess my mom had talked to my grandma about it. And it was just one of those things where it was like 10 o'clock at night. And she was like, hey, why don't you come over tomorrow? And why don't we just like uh, hang out, you know, like we'll, I'll cook dinner and stuff like that. She's a, she was an amazing cook. So she's in Los Angeles. Uh, she lives out in Temecula. And so. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was in OC at the time. OK. You know, um, and then I headed out to Temecula, man. And from there, 
that's where I kind of got my, that's really where everything began. Uh, I got a job at a restaurant 1909 down there and I was busting uh, those tables, you know, it's my first job out there. And I was also doing this networking event called Let's Do Lunch. It's put on by this woman uh, named Sandra Lord. She's one of the most incredible people I've met out here because she literally just puts people together that would fit together for films or music or whatever it is. She just puts on these big networking events. And okay. she, it, it was the first thing I got was a PA job broke in there. And then after that, man, I started DJing. So about a year into me living out here, like a year and a half, I started working at this hookah lounge. They had a DJ set up. I seen the computer and I met the dude that had it. And I was like, hey, bro, you, can, I, can I try? Like, I've, I've always wanted to try this, you know? Like, I, I knew I did want to DJ also. That was something I was like, I hope I can find a way to get into that when I move out here as well. Just uh -huh. I love music. Because, you know, I didn't have too much background in it. But, man, my song selection I always thought was pretty, like, top notch. So it was like one of those things where I started DJing at this hookah lounge and man, my first review was so, I got, I got, man, I got shit on so bad, bro. They're, they're just like, this DJ doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Why is he spinning here? And I didn't see that until maybe like eight months later. I didn't know that they were on Yelp and I didn't know that was going on, but I knew it was about me because I looked at the date and I was like, oh, dang, this is like, this was the first day I DJed. And it was cool because I did it in front of about 20 people. So, uh -huh. I, like the, the hookah lounge, you know, it was good, little good size. And so for the next about year and a half, I would uh, work at 1909 and then I'd go over to the hookah lounge. Uh, I'd help out there. And afterwards, uh, Ron, man, shout out to Ron. He is, dude, he, he's huge blessing. You know, he came into my life and really helped like me get in the door of DJing by just allowing me to do it at the hookah lounge. He let me stay there until like five in the morning after everybody left. You know, I'd clean up, clean everything. And I'd be like, hey, Ron, you mind if I stay here and just practice? So for a good like three, four months, I just was sitting here at the table on a DJ board and the computer. And eventually it just turned into something. I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. And one of the other guys from, that I met from there, Mark uh, Arden, man, he, he was like, he's a great DJ. And he allowed me to go over to his house, just sit there and let me uh, DJ and stuff like that. And, you know, we'd hang out, play some video games. And I'd be like, bro, you, you mind if I spin, if I practice? And he's like, nah, go for it. And it was always just mad love. And, like, he helped me by not telling me what to do, really. He was like, bro, this is how you transition. You take this, put it there, and these are your levels. Have fun. Okay. Come back, start playing video games. And then he would tell me, like, you know, he'd give me games, stuff like that, kind of tell me certain things. But it was one of those things where he really allowed me to, like, learn the craft. So between that and the hookah lounge, I just really dove in on the craft of DJing. And at this time, I was also building the acting side and okay. the film side of things. And so, you know, I had tried, uh, I'd done a couple of things, you know, just getting my feet wet, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with film. And then uh, I think it was 2016. I think it's 2016 was How to Survive High School. Man, I booked this how to, uh, this web series and uh, I didn't realize what it was at the time. And then it ended up doing really well at the, in 2016 and got, uh, it was like 80, 80 plus million views, six ep episode web, web series from the uh, YouTuber Ava. Um, dude, super awesome. It was so much fun to be a part of. And that kind of just led into another thing. I met my buddy Kyle through that, and he's an actor as well and a writer and stuff. And from there, he really helped kind of just break me into the uh, acting world on understanding what it is and stuff like that. He was another dude that was just free game because he had been auditioning for a while, uh, you know, doing a lot more. And I ended up moving up there to Orange County. And at this time, started DJing the frat parties started going on auditions more and that whole side of things. So it's kind of with like the sides, but with the music side of things, man, it just, I feel like my creativeness came from when I was just a little kid, you know, I, I, I always remember wanting to be on the screen. Like 
uh, you know, I don't want to be conceited, but it's just like, I did like watch, I just like watching myself like act. Like I, I felt like when I was a kid, I would do things that I was like, damn, that's cool. I hope I can do this in like a movie. Like I, I want <laughs> to like do this for, for people. You know, I, I love entertaining people. I love taking care of people and just making, I want to make them feel the, like their highest self, you know? No doubt. <laughs> so no doubt. I think through music and film, that's what's brought it out for me. You know, uh, that's why I'm so grateful to be able to do it. Cause man, without this stuff, I, 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 you just don't know, you know what I mean? What you would be doing or the things that you were, your mindset maybe when you, but when you start really focusing on your passion and, and your, like the willpower that you have with it, you know, like the perseverance, it all comes back full circle at some point in your life, you know, right. like, I, like that's what this time as this seven, I moved out here in 2014. So I've been out here for like seven years or so now. And this, that's kind of what I feel like this seven years has really shown me, you know, just being able to be like, wow. Okay. So this is what I wanted to do as a kid. You know, I kind of went this way, but then it came back just full circle, you know, and yeah. my first experience getting into my own music, I just feel like I didn't grab, like, I just didn't have it yet. And right. then, Fast forward a little bit to like 2018. And at this time, dude, I was engineering like, like crazy. I was engineering for Wave Pop a lot. Um, I would engineer it with Yokes um, and random sessions as well. You know, they weren't as consistent because I was still more of a DJ. So this time I'm doing a lot of shows, DJing uh, for Wave Pop, for Yokes. And um, I'm still just learning how to make my own music, you know. And then, uh, it was just one of those things where I would want to say the end of 2018 going into 2019, I feel like everything just clicked for me. I, I had moved back home for a little bit. You know, I went through some uh, just like things that kind of just, you know, just kind of take you off a line. Back, back to Seattle. huh? Yeah. And I had, so I had to move home for a little bit and I couldn't just took that time to regroup because I'd been out here for five years. Wow. How long were you back in Seattle? So I was back home for like nine months, eight months. Okay, so not a full year then. You were... Yeah, I like, you know, I went back to kind of just, I was like, you know, I have, I since I've been out here, I, I kind of visited my family, but I feel like I just need to be home for a little bit, you know, like yeah. I, I missed being in Washington. I missed that feeling. I didn't feel as inspired. And I feel like my life at the time was like, hey, just go take a reset and just yeah. really think about what you're trying to do so that when you go back out there, you're not making the same mistakes you made. Yeah. We're like a little less immature, you know, like having those actual talks with yourself in that regard. Right. So it ended up being kind of a, a beneficial oh, for, sure. for yourself. Yeah. Man. So you came back and imagine now you were a little bit more, you had more clarity or focused. 100%. Came back right. uh, in May of 2019. And, okay. so, but in that About break, two years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. So about two years uh, ago and in that break of being home of the nine months, I met one of my, uh, he's one of my good friends now, bro, is my buddy Chris. And he's a crazy good in, uh, producer and stuff, man. He's in a duo called Amity. Uh, him and uh, Jorgen do their great duo, bro. They're, they're out of Washington and they more make like kind of electronic ambient music and stuff. Okay. Um, Love, I love all their stuff. And he, Chris actually starts producing hip hop and trap and like trap rock stuff. And we met, I ended up getting a job working at Olive Garden. So I was back home. I was like, this time I'm just going to work and work on my music. So I don't really see a lot of old friends or like um, that I went to high school with in that regard, or I didn't see like a lot of people. Cause I, you know, I saw the people I feel like I grew up with that I was really close with, but I feel like I, I had to lock in. You know, I just yeah, had to yeah. take time and, you know, just really focus on what I needed to grow in, which was my artistry. So no doubt, no doubt. That really like, that's when I started recording my own music and Chris and I made an album together. And then that just was the, like, the first album I ever was like proud of, you know? So kind of long story short, man. It, yeah. It, it was kind of like a building block, you know, DJing, producing, engineering, recording yourself and dude now back or walk in there just, it feels simple to me because wow. i've been doing it every day you know like i do like 
before I got into the studio, you got, I had a, I was always at home, you know, and every day and you just get that repetition. And then it's like, all right, now I get the basic of my sound. Where do I want to take this? Yeah. And it's kind of been, you, feel like, it, you know, you, you feel like you got a handle on everything. You got a grasp on, on like you said, your, what your, your sound, what you want your sound to be. Um, you feel like you're, you're, um, you're pretty knowledgeable and, and you're pretty, you're more savvy on, on, yeah, like you said, using the equipment, the, the engineering, the producing, oh, yeah, man. you know, logic, all of the software, it's all of, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, I want to kind of shift gears on you a little bit, Marcus, uh, with, with, with getting into the acting stuff, man. So you, you, you booked a role on um, Princess of the Row, right? Yeah. HBO Max. And talk about that experience, man. You, you were oh. acting on there. Or did you have any speaking? Was it a speaking role? Yeah, yeah, it was. So this was actually like, uh, so prior to this, I had done um, a film called Rocksteady Row, which was a feature. That was my first feature I'd done. And I got it through my buddies that I was living at um, or living with in Orange County. Uh, my buddy, Matt Ramey, man, he was a producer on the film. And uh, the director, Trevor Stevens, they all went to Chapman and stuff. They were all okay. awesome. And uh, we shot up in San Jose. So that was like my first like long shoot, like really being a part of it. And I was just a featured extra. And I ended up actually getting a scene with like the main character. Cause like, there was like kind of just one of those stories where dude, like we were, I was in a frat in the movie. Okay. And it, and so the main character or the main guy in our frat, man, like I was like, dude, this, this dude's an amazing actor. Like I, I really like, I'm seeing his skill set just right in front of me. It's like, wow. This, this, his name? Uh, his name's Logan Hoff, uh, Huffman. Uh, Huff, Huffman. Okay. Let me know if I'm saying that lot, right. Dude, he's, <laughs> he's in a lot of things. Uh, he's, uh, he's in a lot of movies on Netflix, man. And he's in like, uh, there's this one called a bomb. It's it's about the Texas bombing. It's a, uh, like the grunge age. Okay. Um, I've seen too. And just let me straight. Yeah, Logan, Logan Huffman, man. And Logan Huffman, huh? Yeah, he was the he was the main guy in our th in our frat, and I kind of just felt like I was like, okay, I look up to him, so why don't I just really try to imply that into my character? So I just like really just I'm just like yes man on everything, and over the course of the shoot, you know, it just started kind of it kind of like clicked, and so you know I I got some good screen time in that, and it was that was like wow this is cool like this is a movie now because at first it was a web series. And I was in high school. Then it was a movie and I'm playing in a frat. Well, I get back from that, man. And um, at this time, uh, my buddy Kyle, again, you know, he, um, his name is Kyle Bunhoff. He is a great actor, man. He, he's done a lot of stuff. And uh, he has a very wide range of knowledge of like just the film industry. And mm -hmm. so he was somebody I feel like I was able to learn so much from just from his perspective and versus mine and anytime he had had an audition i would help him out like i would read uh opposite for him while he self, uh, self tapes it well you know he gets this audition and it's princess of the row and i'm helping him read and i was like reading the opposite part and i was like dude yo kyle i don't want to like overstep here dude but like after this bro do you think you could help me like uh, you think I could audition? Like, would you care if I audition for this? Like, is that, you, you think that we can make that happen? He's like, yeah, dude, I got the casting director's email. And I was like, oh, like you, you, there you, you go. I was like, nah, dude. And <laughs> did that man. And you know, it, we just got into it, into it. I sent it in and I forgot about it, man. I went to Houston. My dad was working out in Houston at this time. And this was in 2016, I think uh, the end of 2016. So it was either Christmas or Thanksgiving is when we did that audition, like December. And I forgot about it, went, oh, it was Christmas time. So I went home, I went to my, visit my dad for Christmas. I came back, dude, I opened up my laptop. I'm sitting down in the living room, I open it up, I log on. My mail, I haven't touched my laptop all weekend, like not, nothing. I open it up, dude, my mail is sitting there. And the first thing that I read says, Princess of the Row, hey, we'd like to book you. Wow. So the Row the thing, I'm like, what very cool very it, it just, like was like one of those things where i was like this did not just happen dude like this was I, I 
I was like, so just like dumbfounded, bro. And I, but I was so grateful. I, I, and I was, it was one of those things where I was like, dude, That's cool. Kyle, and it was just, wow, this, what a great experience, you know, being able to like audition for something that I didn't like have an yeah. audition for, and to be able to book it. It was just kind of like, at that time I was like really questioning. I was like, dang, you know, being an actor is tough. You know, it was just, I, I I didn't know if I should just fully focus on music or really try to do the acting side of things too. And so that was, I feel like those angels, man, just telling you, Hey, nah, we like, we got you, whether it's something like that or even something, you know, just going on more auditions. Yeah. 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 A big just sign of like, okay, I can do this, cool. you know? And so um, fast forward 2017 summer ended up shooting that and they took it on the film festival circuit and you know uh yeah we did an all-night shoot man it was it was a blast uh the director max carlson man is he, he's such an awesome guy and uh all, everybody on the team dude it, it was such a fun experience the being on set that that night it was from 6 p.m to 6 a.m so it was a it was a, one of those night ones you know yeah the 4 a.m kick in and we're still shooting our scene like we're still <laughs> some parts like they're getting different angles and it was like, yo, this is, this is like, you get that second win and it's like, wow, I'm doing what I love at four in the morning right now. That's awesome. Man. And, and so that whole experience was, uh, it was, uh, dude, it's like, it really was a dream come true, man. Like I, you know, I don't want to sound cheesy in that way, but it's just, no. it, I, I was so grateful to be able to just experience the acting side finally after doing so many different things like PA work or whatever sure. I needed to just get on set. And then from there, you know, they were going to drop release it in uh, i think 2020 and then you know COVID happened so they pushed it back and they ended up dropping it um at the end of the year like right right around thanksgiving i think and do two months later or three months later i think it was in january like hey this is going to hbo max and i was like wow that's that's a, yeah. that's a wild thing and one thing that i would just like i want to touch on because this is something that man i I believe in it for everybody. I believe that it's a, it's a real like manifestation thing. Uh -huh. I was doing those networking events at, uh, with Kimberly and my auntie, we did a Hollywood breakfast and it's a hundred people and they have a guest speaker. Well, at this one, it was Len Amano, who was the president of HBO at the time. So he gives a speech and then afterwards, you know, you can go up and meet him, give him your business card and, and so on. Well, I walked up to him and I was like, yo, Len, man, HBO is my favorite network growing up. I'm a huge fan of Entourage. Like that really inspired me to just kind of see something bigger than myself. And, and it just was, I was able to watch that and experience it. I just appreciate your guys' network, dude. I can't wait to be on it. And I remember he looked at me, he's like, that's going to be awesome, man. And it was just like, that's you don't, cool. you know, it's just like, hey, I, I'll never forget that after Princess of the Road going to HBO, it was just like. It came true, man. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm a huge manifester, man. Like that, that type of thing, I've been able to feel like when you just really, you believe it, kind of like with when you're recording music or you're writing or, or you're driving even, when you're driving with meaning and you're driving with purpose, it's like, yeah, you need to get to that destination because you're, you're, you're just, you're, you know where you're going, you know, you know what you're I love that. And I feel like- I love I, that, Marcus. Oh, uh, yeah, man, dude. I, I just, I, I really believe people like just need to believe in themselves and believe that they're not crazy. Like their ideas aren't crazy. Like, dude, I had like nothing when I first came out here in the regard of just not knowing, no knowledge, no tangible things and just being able to survive for one and mm. like not have to run home every six months or not have to rely on other people. You know, like I, I've been in tough positions where dude, I, like having family is such an amazing thing. You know, like my, my mom is the most amazing woman in the world. Man. I wouldn't be here in this position without her. Like mm. I have so, so much like love for what she has like, a, like just kind of embraced about what I'm doing and stuff. And she's yeah. been a supporter from the beginning. You know, she, she was, it was tough for me to leave, but like, I, she's always supported just believe she's always believed in what I wanted to do and always encouraged it. And she's like really put me in a place where I'm like, oh, this is I'm doing this for you. Like I, I want I want to be able to take care of the family. I want to be able to do those things. And so for I sure. think 
manifesting that stuff and speaking it out is something that really just sets you on a, on a track at least like it gets you running at least gets you walking you know like here we go yeah no no it's, it's definitely an, insp an inspiration marcus uh, everything you've been through man and uh to hear your story i i uh it just kind of it's it really yeah man it puts things in perspective and you kind of what i'm taking from your story is like you're right man it's believe in yourself man believe in yourself your your, your ideas your dreams they're not far-fetched man they can be uh, reality they can become reality man and right. can be right. it's a real thing it's a real thing oh. You got your hat on right now, bro. Profile Pod TV, man. It's like you, you make that stuff happen. And, you know, I love exactly. feeling that same energy, bro. That's one thing I was so like, dude, I uh, watching your podcast, bro, and listening, I can feel the like the energy of just wanting to be here, wanting to do this and wanting to create something bigger. And when I go to the studio, when I network, when I do that, bro, I feel the same way, you know, as far as yes. just you want to be here, you want to do this stuff. So all this stuff, man, this is beautiful. Great. You know, it, like, this yeah, is, no. it's, um, like, it's just great, but absolutely, yeah. Marcus. I, Manifest it, some thoughts, man. Yeah, no, I, I man, I'm huge on that. I, man, I, you know, I, I, get, I do my affirmations. I, I, I have, I read my, uh, my goals. I literally read them every day in the morning. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in this to win this. So, so. You know, where, wonder, where, go ahead. Where'd you, where'd you start at, like with with podcasting, man? I actually want to ask you that. I was so curious, you know, like just a, a more of a conversation aspect on, on your end, dude. Like, because I've seen you've been doing it for a long time, man. Was this something that you always wanted to do too, like growing up? Like you're like, you know, I want to like kind of just talk with people. I want to be, I want to be in a room, just kind of, you know what I mean? Well, you found later and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, well, you know, long story short, I, I, my, 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 my story kind of parallels yours. You know, where mm. I was a kid, I, I, I used to love, um, you know, watching movies. I love music. I love uh, everything about the arts. You know. Yeah, yeah. Fascinated by it. You know, Universal Studios. When I was a kid, you know, I grew up in, in Inland Empire, Ranch Cucamonga, not too far from Temecula. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. No, right. Right. There. So I right up the 15 freeway. Uh, I used to, you know, I used to, yeah, I used to dream about making, you know, acting and, uh, and, you know, I, I love all the behind the scenes aspect of things, man. How, yeah. How a movie gets made, how a song gets written, how music gets produced. And I've always just been fascinated with the whole, that whole world. I did some acting, um, and yeah, you know, Instagram actually, man, you, uh, you play, uh, um, uh, Mark McGuire. <laughs> Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco, dude, <laughs> awesome, bro. Yeah, bro. So I, I, I've dabbled. I've had my share of, and you know, kind of. Um, again, you know, long story short, I, I a couple years ago, two years ago in 2019, I, I started thinking. Uh, well, you know, I kind of want to get. I want to get big, and I, I don't want to, you know, live the rest of my life with regrets, and I, I want to get back into that world, you know. So how do I do that? I, um, uh, you know, do I get back into acting? Um, uh, do I, what's the most accessible way and podcasting, man, podcasting ended up being that, that, uh, accessible, that door where I could just push it open right away and yeah. get going. And it was 29 January of 2019. That I did my first podcast. I was using, I was literally, you know, writing stuff down, writing my, my monologue, reading from a, 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 pa a piece of paper. Try not to sound, you know, like I was reading. Yeah. yeah. Here we are, bro. Two, two years late, two and a half years, almost two and a half years later. And dude, and you're natural, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, man. Just from doing like, dude, I, pot, like, bro, I'm, I've been trying to think about how to create a podcast for like what I would want to do as far as like what would be what would it be for and things like that. And I've dude, I've been thinking about it for two, three years. And it's been something that I'm like, it's gonna come at the right time. I, what I want, what I've been wanting to do is go on more podcasts. You know, I've been wanting to experience being able to just go around talking to people and just seeing like that experience of, 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 cause it's not, it's not like a interviews as much anymore. It's like, yo, we're having like dope conversations. Like, yeah. you're, you're, like people aren't poking, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like that's mm -hmm. for the, the mainstream stuff and things like that. But podcast, man, is one of those things that I'm like, yo, people yeah. listen 
people people enjoy this because I I mean I know I do and if I'm not listening to music podcasts you know and Flip is also a huge podcast that she 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 listens to some really good stuff. That's all. Yeah, man. There's some really good like you mentioned earlier. There's some really good stuff where you know, there's people dropping a lot of knowledge on podcasts, man. A lot of information, and it's it's yeah, man. It's really really um, some a place where you can get substance, you know. Uh, but yeah, a couple more questions for you, Marcus, man. I wanted to kind of just ask you, what's your favorite thing, man? Auto, you do a lot of stuff, man. You, you, you act, you, you engineer, you produce music, you, uh, you run your, 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 your record company, man. What, what's the, do you have a favorite thing that you do out of all those things? Are you equally passionate or can you narrow it down to maybe one of those things? I would say, bro, it, I, honestly, it, it's, Dude, cause each thing that I, you know, it brings out a different side of me, a different feeling and a different like fight in a sense, you know, like different willpowers. And what I mean by that, bro, is like, I want to say recording my own music, but that's like the therapeutic side. And then I want to say DJing because DJing is like the rage side, you know, it's like the, it's the show, it's the, it's the experience side, you know, and then acting is like the real time that you get to spend within yourself saying, Hey, look, I'm just going to step outside my body for a minute here. You can clock in. You're, you're, you know what I mean? Like, here we go. This is, you know, this is not who you are. Like, dude, princess of the row, man. I, bro, just sign on that like thing, bro. I was uh, doing a thing called share meal. And actually, bro, I want to sh shout out the guy who created this stuff, man. I've, I've had this since the day I started and I've not taken this off my wrist, bro. It's a little faded, but it says family. Okay. And it stands for. Oh, I see it. I see it. I Okay. And it stands for, in the, it, it's forget about me. I love you. And this guy, Mike Manhart, man, created it. He does this thing called share a meal in, in LA here. And I was doing that right before I booked princess of the row. It was so wild to me because I feel like my, cause my role in that, you know, I'm not trying to give spoiler in a way, but I just do something that <laughs> I would never do to a human being, you know, like, I, like, dude, I felt bad in the moment. I remember feeling like, Oh, this, but I, I just had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was one of those things where it wasn't harmful, but it's just the idea of that. And then acting and I was like, huh, you know, like acting kind of sometimes in certain ways can like just kind of trace in, but then you start trusting your instinct, realize, Oh, it's not who I am. You know, mm -hmm. you're just being homeless people. Like they're like, I, one of the, my favorite things I, I did during the sharing meal stuff, man, was when I lived at Chapman, the sorority was about to throw out all their Chipotle food, bro. And my buddy Kyle and I went and ended up getting it. And it was, bro, I made 60, like probably 60 bowls. It filled the whole ping pong table okay, wow. of Chipotle stuff. And this, again, this is when I was doing it a lot. So like, I was very focused on like, yo, this is something I'm enjoying right now. Mm -hmm. I'm about to go hang these out in Venice. Dude, oh, cool. A buddy I had met through Share Meal, him and I ended up going out to Venice, bro, and handing that stuff out. And then Princess Laro happened. And it was oh, just like wow. that full circle aspect where I was like, man, I didn't do this out of like wanting something back. And the universe gave back to me. Because exactly. You know what I mean? Like, bro, we all need to take care of each other. Like, so everybody needs some, uh, everybody needs love, man. Like, no matter Absolutely. like where they're at, I've always tried to, you know, just think about like, I, you know, I, I've made my fair share of mistakes of like, you know, these arguments, these things, but at the end of the day, bro, like I, I'm really trying to focus and focus on solely just positive energy, embracing that and just being able to move forward in, in life in that way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And not, not bridges and, and that sort. And so uh, I think I answered the question there, right? Yeah. 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 yeah no, that's, I love that, man. The, the, the many facets of so each thing. But, oh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Something out, something different about yourself. You know, the acting side, the DJ side, the music side. What, what's the greatest compliment someone is uh, giving to you uh, in regards to your art? Oh, bro. Your art, uh, forms of art. Bro, by far, like, this happened literally, uh, I want to say, two weeks ago bro i i, I start, like bro I, I started like almost tearing up i had glasses on bro like bro, i, I could be sensitive bro i'm not gonna lie you know like mm -hmm. some, <laughs> you know it's one of those things right but it's also like 
Uh, so, bro, Drake's my favorite artist, bro. Like, okay. From from like when I first heard him, bro, I'm like, yo, this dude's like so ahead, bro. He's yeah. creating himself through the music, and I looked who he's around. Little Wayne was someone I loved so much, bro. Uh, you know, Travis is also like one of the more new age people that I really like, but J Cole, bro. Yeah. Big Cole and uh, Kanye, man. Like, those guys were really, like, that was my playlist 24-7. Anybody that knew me, bro, I was playing Drake or J. Cole. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, I got into Kendrick kind of coming out of high school and stuff. And Kendrick's, man, dudes. Like, that that era of music to me, like, 20, uh, 2008 to, like, 2014 was just, I embraced, like, OVO. Like, that was, like, wow, this is, this is that. So... Bro, best thing anybody's ever said to me, bro, two weeks ago, I played this record um, that is actually going to be on uh, the next album, bro, that I'm dropping. It, and it, uh, they literally, they didn't know it was me because uh, I was just playing. My producer friend came through and he had someone with him. And I played that shit. And at the end of it, she was like, man, that that made me feel like I was listening to Drake. Wow. She was like, I was like, Bro, I've literally, bro, I had the most chills I've ever had. Like, bro, I just respect Drake's music so highly, man. Yeah. He, me, bro, when I look at somebody that's able to do something at a high level, but also wide range, people could say what they want, bro. But the dude, to me, is one of the most talented people and, like, talented entertainers in music and has created a whole culture around, like, OVO and what they do. And it's also carried over because when he started doing stuff with Future, Man, Future created it, and Gucci Man when they created like the real trap scene and they started intertwining and everything. Yeah, be able to be just like somebody say that like they could say anybody, bro. Like it, it, it was just one of those things. I feel like, I uh, you know, like I said, bro. There's features that I, 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 I believe that like, bro. I, I just want you know what I'm saying like I want Drake feature, bro. I want J Cole feature. Oh, and Russ, bro. Russ is the other guy that is in my top playlist, dude. I think Russ is one of the most intelligent, like people, bro, in the industry as far as just knowledge and just talking about what you really want to be and like want to do. And yeah. I, I, I was not scared to share that stuff, bro, because it, it's like people need to know that it's okay to believe in yourself. You know what I mean? But yeah. that was like by far, dude. That like it just it made my week, bro. Like it, it made my, actually like a lot of things, you know. So it was just. That's cool. You take it with a grain of salt, of course, you know, like I, like, I don't think I sound like Drake. I don't think like that, but it's like, wow. That, yeah. that, that like somebody said, all right, cool. Like I, I'm doing something right. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm not doing something wrong in that regard. Cause I work a lot. Like, you know, if I'm not working with flip or getting booked out, I'm in the studio by myself majority of the time. And so I like, you know, feedback on music doesn't come, uh, often from a lot like so i don't play it for a lot of people you know flip hears all the songs and she makes a lot of music too so it, it, it like it, uh -huh. it gets it you know yeah but, uh, in the regard where it's just like when you play some stuff for people and it's just like whoa okay go yeah that's cool oh, man you know? and i hope to get drake on a song bro <laughs> yeah hey man I, I manifest it manifest it yeah right and yeah you hear it here first on profile bro <laughs> that's right that's right baby that's right man Marcus, man, what what um, I like to end the the each each episode with my guests with this question, man. Who's who are some mentors, people that have influenced you in your life? Could be anyone, man. You know, family, friends, oh, you know, yeah. uh, musicians, uh, celebrities that you would like to sit down and have dinner with. But, oh man, that's a that's amazing. Um, Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, bro, is by far on the top of that list, bro, for the aspect of, like, being in the industry for as long as he's been in. And also, not only that, bro, he's my, like, this dude is, like, to me, like, the greatest actor, you know? Like, I, I you see him put himself into every role. And Will Smith and Jamie Foxx and, and, like, those guys are, like, all up there for me, too, bro. And The Rock, like, I, that kind of, and Brad Pitt, bro, just gave you the top five right there. All those guys are <laughs> acting, bro. But then you have Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, like those types of caliber, like those types of minds, bro, I wanted to be surrounded around, you know? And then for the music side, is, bro, I, 
you know, I, I cannot wait to get in the studio with people like Drake, J. Cole, like those guys, or they're that type of just thoughts. Cause their music has inspired me to not just make a song. Like, bro, my music is literally like, I, I could not explain it better in a story other than through my music. Like from high, I, so I dropped three albums last year. It started at high tide. Then I did frequency. And then, uh, I did 25 and all three of those, man, it just like, you, you can play them all together. I'm a DJ first. So like, I think about stuff in that way where I'm like, yo, if people were to put this all in a playlist, they're going to see that this is actually like an hour long mix. It's oh. not it's like, you know, it's not just a bunch of different random songs that all sound the same, bro. Every song has a different meaning and a different purpose. And it's one of those things where, I learned that, I think, from listening to Kanye, Drake, J. Cole. Like, those three guys, man, they talk, they talk storytelling through music, you know, like. And it, it just was one of those things where I also get very inspired by what I'm around and the energy I'm around. So if I'm around stuff that's like, you know, uh, it's like I make music that's like, ah. Uh, but if I'm like there and everybody's there, dude, everything's beautiful, you know. But I also don't feel like, uh, uh but yes the, that is that is i would say people i kind of look up to that but i want to shout out, like of course my mom my dad my sister my brother and flip you know like she, everybody uh that has just been very close to me you know um my buddy mitchell one take bro he's been and dustin one uh my well he doesn't go by i don't think he goes by one take anymore i gotta ask him about it but my buddy mitchell bro and my buddy od the two boys from seattle um you know they they work in film they do film photography stuff and from the time i moved out here we've like really just built our relationships work together and my boy yokes man um dude he's somebody also i'd love to introduce you to bro he is he's just like he's been my probably my main mentor since i moved to california bro and i met him through my buddy jp just a side note who jp i modeled his clothes that was the first time i ever did any modeling was for oh, cool. the brand. And then which, the which brand? I'm sorry. Uh, it's called the Riots. It's like a streetwear, skatewear, uh, apparel site, and super awesome stuff, man. Like he was just starting out to get people with the model this stuff, and then he introduced me to Yokes. And again, from there, Yokes has just been always been somebody that I can be like, hey, bro, what do you think about this? Like, not on some like he doesn't tell me how to do my stuff. He doesn't tell me what to do in my life. He doesn't try to change what I want to do. I've met a lot of people, bro, who want to put you into this certain area because it helps them so much that they don't care like what you're really wanting to do with your stuff. So you want to, I, I want to surround myself around people who just let me flourish, let me out the box, you know, let me do my yeah. thing. But also it's just a mutual respect stuff, you know? So, uh, Yokes is somebody that's just always been there. And then, you know, my, uh, also, of course, bro, my the, the Hoffman family, bro, that is my buddy I grew up uh, playing basketball with, man. Uh, Tyler and his family, dude, family, like, for my whole life, bro. I go on vacation with them growing up, and Tyler, like, me and him, we used to hang out all the time, man. And it was one of those things where I had a lot of good, like, friends growing up that play sports with and stuff, bro. And through that, like, Tyler and I have just stayed great friends for, like, you know, it, it, we've gone like different like you know we've gone in different trajectories but it's always been like one of those things where you just pick up where you left off you know and those those, those types of people that are in your life bro i i, I value highly you know because it's not every day where you make i feel like long lasting relationships unless you know you put in the effort these days because i feel like when you get to be an adult you gotta really you do gotta like you gotta put in an effort to to flourish the relationships you yeah know? You're not seeing people at sports you're not seeing people at school anymore you're not you yeah know, it's like life happens so let's 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 make this relationship like grow and be you know and still like be there you know it's okay. easy to get caught up in the stuff out here man I like just working and you know networking and you know that that side of things you know you don't want to get too far in it but yeah man I, and I, I just shout out kind of everybody I talked about too bro like has been a huge part of my journey bro of just create being able to come within like be surf be marcus you know 
just be who I want to be and do what I want to do because I want to do this to inspire people. You know what I'm saying? I love that's what you like talk about at the beginning there, bro, because that's why I do music, man. I, I, I really want to make music for people that can listen to it and, and just feel that, oh, okay, I'm not alone. And, or be like, Hey, yo, this song's sick. Like it, you know, I was having a bad day, but like I listened to this and I was like, this gave me some perspective, you know, like yeah. gave me insight. Like I, I uh, very much so just talk about like my experiences with things and, and I don't, I don't want to like I, I make stuff up. I don't want to feel like I'm like trying to be something I'm not, you know, yeah, so yeah. at the end of the day, I just, I really want to stay true to, to who I am, you know? Yeah. Hey, thanks again, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to, I can't thank you enough, man. So let's get you back on in the future. Oh, and, most definitely. Uh, Bro, yeah. make something happen, bro. And, and, uh, like I said, June, man, I got a show going on and I'm doing my album release. So, bro, I'd love to have you through. And if you if you want to do uh, anything there, bro, like like I said, I introduce you to Greg at the Milk Room and we could set something up and Rob and stuff, bro. And we, we could do something because uh, there's going to be five acts. So I'm putting the show on so I'm going to get the people together and things like that. And are you uh, performing? Yeah. So oh, OK. I'm gonna perform and then I'll probably and then I'll be DJing for other uh, acts. So okay. uh, I'm getting the list together of people right now, and uh, I've DJed a couple times there before, bro. So uh, I finally was like, "Hey, I'm trying to try to put on a show, trying to bring on some people, and just introduce new people to the you know environment." And you were somebody, bro. I'd love love to have you come through, bro, and just see what's going on there. I'd love to, man. Let's do it. Let's do it, brother. All right, All right man. Well Ladies and gentlemen, there you have Marcus Blake, a.k.a. Surf, CEO of Surf Records. Go check him out. Go check out his Instagram. Go check out his music on Spotify, all, all major platforms. He's got music dropping June 5th, June 12th, and he is doing big things in um, the music uh, community. He's acting, and, uh, you know, the, the sky's uh, – he's going – he's going to – He's going to the universe. He's going to out in the outer space. No, bro, to, no limits. So. To the moon, bro. Doge the moon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Get so get ready to to hear that name. And uh, thanks again, brother. Hey, thank you, bro. Absolutely, man. Absolutely for, for this, man. So go ahead. We'll say again. I'm sorry. Uh, just, I was just saying, super grateful to be here, bro, and to be a part of this, dude, and be able to just. Uh, share share my story my experiences man i i hope that uh you know we can all just again just come together bro and just make make the rest of the future bro just what we want it to be you know absolutely we gotta keep manifesting keep manifesting well there you have it there you have it marcus blake thank you so much ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for being here on youtube on the audio platforms much appreciated i'm double a your host don't forget to subscribe to, on YouTube, leave a rate and review, all that good stuff. Hit me up on Instagram, shoot me a DM, go get your hats, and we will be back for another episode of Profile Pot TV for Marcus Blake, aka Surf. I am Double A, your host, and always remember to take it easy. <laughs>